drama approaches the final act. Late evening, Friday, January 31st, 1958. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Think of that. But it sums up some of my feelings on why I love space travel, why I write science fiction, why I'm intrigued with what's going on this weekend at Mars. And part of this has my philosophy about space travel in it. If you'll permit, I'll read it to you. It's very, very short. Since we walked between the years, did balance us serene. It was a place half in the sky where in the green of leaf and promising of peach, we reach our hand to touch and almost touch the sky. If we could reach and touch, we said, it would teach us not to, never to, be dead. We ate and almost touched that stuff. Our reach was never quite enough. If only we had Tyler been and touched God's cuff, his, his hem, we would not have to go with them who'd gone before, who, short as us, stood tall as they could stand, and hoped by stretching tall that they might keep their land, their home, their heart their flesh and soul, but they like us were standing in a hole. Oh, Thomas, will a race one day stand really tall across the void, across the universe and all, and measured out with rocket fire, at last put Adam's finger forth as on the Sistine ceiling, and God's hand come down the other way to measure man and find him good and gift him with forever's day? I work for that. Short man, large dream. I send my rockets forth between my ears, hoping an inch of good is worth a pound of years. Aching to hear a voice cry back along the universal mile. We've reached Alpha Centauri. We're tall. Oh God, we're tall. This is one of the hardest things that has ever been done by the human species. These features and these pictures are like the pages of a history book. Now we can begin to compare and contrast, to look for similarities and differences, and try to recognize our family relationships among the terrestrial planets. Are we cousins or brothers? Or are all of us bizarre strangers that happen to inhabit the same portion of the solar system? For me, it's mind blowing. The first time I saw what the system had in it, I just was like, you gotta be kidding me. <laughs> Super excited, amazed by the existence, the very existence of the system was, was kind of, of, yeah, of shock. I would have never predicted this. It's beyond you know, anything I could have ever dreamt of. It's so monumental to see the vastness of what we were doing. What a fantastic demonstration of what our nation and our agency can do. I could only think of the words of Teddy Roosevelt as I was sitting there. It is far better to dare mighty things even though we might fail than to stay in a twilight that knows neither victory nor defeat. And the team brought us victory. I just wanted to call and say congratulations to the entire Mars Science Laboratory team and really all of JPL. You guys should be remarkably proud. And this is the kind of thing that inspires kids across the country. As we got closer to Mars and the dust cleared, we see a lot of Martians standing there with huge signs saying Bradbury was right. 